Hello again. We're going to talk some more about revising today and I want you to look at revising for meaning. Um, revising for meaning is taking a look at your paper and making sure that it says what you think it says. Um, one best way to make sure of that is to read it out loud. Um, I know it seems very strange and you probably feel weird about it, but when we read something out loud, it helps our brain to actually engage with what's really there. As opposed to when we read in our head, read silently, um, a lot of times our brain fills in the information for us because we know it should be there and it's hard to tell whether it's there or not. The other reason that reading things out loud will really help you is because it helps you hear um, how the different verb tenses and sentences and different things go. I know that um, I'm a really good speller, but I'm not a fabulous typist. Um, and so I will have words on my page that are real words, but not the ones I want. If I read them out loud, I'm more likely to figure that out and fix them before y'all see them. It doesn't always work, but it's a better job. Okay, so revising for meaning. Many of the problems in papers lie in their inability to make a point, okay? You can go on and on and on, but it lacks focus. So it's really hard for other people to follow and figure out what you're really trying to say. Or you have a great point, but it's not really one that anybody is interested in. Um, the point lacks passion or relevance, um, and it's... We all do it, okay? Sometimes we're just trying to get the word count in, right? Um, for this particular revision strategy, though, um, it's best to let your paper lay for a while, even if it's just an hour. Um, get up, get something to eat, or take a walk, or, you know, whatever. But make sure that you've given it a little bit of space. Um, because again, our brains can continue to make meaning out of things that are garbled um, because they know what it's supposed to say. Okay. And this time, the revising for meaning work is in the boldface questions. Um, now, the little paragraphs underneath them are kind of explanations of, okay, so what should this be? Um, so I'm just going to walk through them. The first thing is, okay, so you have your draft. You've let it rest for a little while. You come back, read it straight through. No pens, no nothing in, in, your, in your hand, okay? No highlighter on your um, device, however you're going to do it. So first of all, what surprised you? Was there anything that you found interesting or that caught your attention? Um, if so, write it down, okay? Um, open another document, write a note, whatever. Make sure that the things that catch your attention get more attention um, because if it's something that surprised you on a second read then it's probably going to surprise your your readers um, what did you learn from writing or reading this draft okay um, when you started out you had a motive for writing even if that's just the assignment sheet um, is that motive still active does that motive still hold um, if you're supposed to be writing um, a rhetorical analysis um, or you're supposed to be writing a researched argument is that what you ended up with okay and sometimes the answer to that is eh, not quite um, it's all kinds of fun when you figure out that you had a question to answer and you wrote a great paper but you didn't answer the question make sure that you look back at your assignment sheet at this point and make sure that you've got all your pieces in done. If you don't, make sure that you write notes again to, to put them in there. Um, what one thing, what is the most important thing your reader, your audience need to know? Make sure it's in your paper. Make sure that it's obvious in your paper. Okay. What one thing, sorry, what piece of the paper do you really want to explore further? If you have time and if it doesn't go against what the paper um, assignment says, what else do you want to know? Go figure it out. Add it in. Okay. What is the single most important detail, quote, factor idea in the draft? If you can't put your finger on it, 
you haven't written it well enough. Go back in, revise. Make sure, excuse me, make sure that the most important part of your paper, the most important quote you have, ends up actually on the page. You'd be surprised how often it does not. Okay, so make sure in your revising for meaning assignment that you go back through and you answer these questions so that you can revise your draft. Um, again, you're going to get a peer review, you're going to get me or your other instructor working on things, but you need to be able to look at your work and say, oh, I missed that part, or this could be better, um, this could be tighter, um, maybe it's supposed to be three sentences instead of ten. Happens to me all the time. Anyway, um, I hope this helps. Let me know if you have questions. You know how to get me.